You're still watching Waze. Now, Teddy Bear Picnic Day, celebrated mainly in the United States, Canada, Australia, and in some parts of Europe. Um, the origins of this unofficial holiday are unknown, but it's also unclear what the holiday aims to achieve. It could be that the anonymous creator of the holiday wanted parents to encourage creativity amongst their children by taking them out uh, for a whimsical picnic in the outdoor with their teddy bears and other stuffed toys. Now, the, the holiday owes it its name to a song of the same name by American composer John Walter Bratton and Irish lyric, lyricist Jimmy Kennedy. I don't know about this holiday, whether it applies to both boys and girls. It should be more of girls <laughs> because if I catch my son doing no. this. <laughs> no, but hey, the reason I said it is that people are so stereotyped. Mm -hmm. we, try to, we try to tell a boy, this is how you have to behave, this is how mm -hmm. you have to be as a girl. Uti, but, you have a son. But boys can play play tea house with, with girls as well. They can act as the man while yeah. the girls act like the ladies pouring the tea and all that. I want to ask Uti. Uti, me and mama boys yeah. as well. You, you have boys. <laughs> eh? You have a boy. Would you yeah. do, would you do uh, teddy bears as toys, like stuffed toys and all of that for them, for him? Yeah, he, so he has tons of teddy bears. I think, um, like you said, there's that stereotypical thing. My son absolutely loves trucks. He's obsessed with trucks. But mm -hmm. the idea for him now, he's somehow, he's always had teddy bears on his bed. Mm -hmm. And it seems like um, in the last three months, he's all of a sudden realized that they're there. And he's interacting with them. And he's taking the shirt off one and putting it on the other. <laughs> so, I mean, it's allowing these children to, to it's crazy. Yeah. Express yeah. themselves. Especially when you so have yeah, emotional. Like my, my son is quite emotional. You correct him because he likes to call them dolls. Yeah. So I correct him and say, it's not a doll, it's a teddy bear. No, you have to call them teddy bears, yeah. My son yeah. is actually quite warm, so he mm -hmm. likes, you know, to all those cuddly, cuddly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let's not be let's no, not. No, be stereotypical. I'm not being stereotyped. I'm just saying that there are just some things you don't see, you don't want to see the boys doing. Well, basically. oh yeah, what's That's in the it. news? Uh, what's in the news? <laughs> Now the Chinese government has come again, this time um, in Kazakhstan. They said that um, they are warning the public on pneumonia, that there is a new pneumonia oh, currently oh in Kazakhstan. Now, this is the funny part. The, in fact, the scary part mm. is that this was how the story actually started on coronavirus, when the doctor actually blew the alarm and said that there was a, yeah, Yes, a exactly. Deadly, yeah. And currently, they are saying that in Kazakhstan that the pneumonia virus, which is yet to be named, it has affected about 628 people in and Kazakhstan, deadlier. including Chinese. And it is more deadly hmm. compared to the coronavirus, coronavirus. Wow. because of the fact that a lot of people have already died as a result of this. About 1,772 adults have, uh, uh, or have individuals passed. have passed as a result of this. Wow. Currently, they are carrying out a comparative research to uh, um, code or decode what is the difference between the, the um, what's it called, the coronavirus and the this new and the new pneumonia. virus, which has not Please. been given a name. Wow. Remember also, there is a conspiracy theory that mm. says that this is not a pandemic, but a plandemic, wow. because they believe that actually it was actually um, put out there by somebody to actually cause so much problems. Hmm. All I can say is, Lord have mercy. I've lost too many people today. You can I'm, say I, that I again. mean, today, Honorable Tunde Braimor passed, you know. To this COVID-19, a lot of people have died. So I don't even want to hear a new disease. Another one, <laughs> exactly. Uti, so what did you find for us in the news? Um, so again, sticking with um, Asia and China in particular, so I'm talking about TikTok and the fact that the app has been taken down um, from the Hong Kong app stores after a new national security law came into effect. So back in, well, last month, June, around the 29th, um, Beijing passed the law, China passed the law um, that really, so if you, if you remember back to 2019 with all the issues that were happening in, um, in Hong Kong with all the protests and all of that against mainland China um, and really this for me is this is that story or this situation, this tension mm -hmm. um, between Hong Kong and mainland China really um, taking or taking a different uh, tone and you know the whole world i think following the the pandemic 
there's a lot of anti-Chinese sentiment mm -hmm. uh, going around. And so China basically, for me, interpreting the story, trying to tighten their noose around Hong Kong. So they've created this new security law, which is essentially trying to um, prevent secession and um, subversion. Again, it's trying to, to continue to have control yeah. over Hong Kong. And this is now denying them the right to, to the freedoms that were agreed when the UK handed over um, Hong Kong to China in 1997. Mm. So the problems are just going on. But basically, TikTok, TikTok users woke up to find that they couldn't access TikTok and they had a message on their phone thanking them for allowing TikTok to be part of their lives. But due to this new law that has now come into effect, they would no longer be able to use TikTok. It's no longer on the App Store, so people can't download it. Mm. TikTok is actually owned by a Chinese company called yeah. ByteDance. Um, but they have a, a different version that they use um, within mainland China. Mm. Um, and TikTok has really, uh, if you sort of look anywhere on social media during this lockdown, I think TikTok was the superstar. In fact, that was what I was going to say about TikTok, yeah. Uti, that, you know, you know how many people that were saved from depression just by watching TikTok videos or making TikTok videos. I mean, I don't think this is a smart move. Because it has actually occupied a lot of people their minds. Exactly. I mean, kept some people sane. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not on that app, but I know many people that went on the app and started finding comical relief for exactly. themselves. Exactly. Well, I. I, play, and I hope it plays out well Family for bonding. Them. We saw a lot of videos of parents and kids. Yeah. You know, doing crazy stuff together. So I mean, it's a really, it's a great app, but we can't um, ignore the concerns around China. Even the U.S. is looking to ban it. Yeah. Um, because of this fear around sharing um, data and access yeah so like i said the anti-chinese sentiment is really going around it's, and, and it's strong the yeah. more we keep seeing stories like more diseases and things it's not going to help all right so but, my um, story is going to be quick and short okay. so apparently um th there's a news going around and we've tried it and that's why we're taking the story um uh when uh, when when we started having because I, I was having serious issues with my phone it kept on insisting it kept on hanging that i must upgrade i must upgrade i must exactly. upgrade and all of that I finally got around, I had to delete some app to be able to upgrade. And so when people had that phone disruption earlier this week, um, so apparently the allegations were that, you know, they were adding uh, COVID-19 trackers to our phones. You know, so all you need to do if you have an Android phone, and you can try this out. If you have an Android phone, go under the Google um, the setting, then Google settings, and it's there. Then if you are an iPhone user like myself, if you check the privacy and then check health, it's there and it's just but the only thing is that it's not been turned on you know it's not been turned on so i think this is supposed to help track so if there's a covid 19 case you know they can track all the people that was linked to that Around particular that. person and you know yeah well it's a good thing but i don't understand how somebody just goes into my phone so there's no such thing as privacy anymore but we can't really delve so mm. much on this because well uh, i mean if you're using this technology you know that you're open to some of these concerns yeah exactly. um, it is worrying but when this so this came to my attention uh, probably about three four weeks ago and i remember at the time asking what's the point of this and they said okay so you would get a notification if there's a known case of covid um within your area mm. so again not necessarily a bad thing i I'd, I'd, I'd like the fact that um you know, maybe there'll be some pop-up to tell you that this is being implemented. But uh, if you look on the flip side, this is one of the techniques or one of the tools that China really used to, to lock track down. It down. Yeah, um, absolutely. Exactly. So All right. So not necessarily a bad thing, maybe just the approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there. So Femi Akande will join us right after the break to discuss multi-generational wealth. Stay with us.